Welcome back. This is part two, Open House Profit Playbook, Generate Leads and Seal More Deals. If you have not listened to the first part, do listen to the first part from yesterday. It's available, of course, at Stitcher, uh, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube. Mm -hmm. I mean, everywhere. Really. All the normal places. At, yes. All the places, yeah. Oh, and by the way, guys, the new uh, podcast ratings just came out. Thank you for keeping this podcast one of the most downloaded uh, podcasts in all podcast world, but also consistently the number one daily podcast specifically for real estate agents. There's other real estate podcasts, but this one being specifically a coaching and training podcast for you guys. There is no comp competition because of all of you making this show such a consistent success. We have thousands and thousands and thousands of daily listeners, and we love the fact that you guys have made um, us part of your daily routine because doing this podcast for all of you has certainly become part of our daily routine and some days dominating our day because this podcast takes so much time and effort because we give you guys all the notes. So um, other than the other day when we were talking about the election results, <laughs> no we, notes. we do have uh, notes for each podcast and those notes are published and only they're, the way you can access them and download them and use them for your own training, education, um, maybe even in some cases social media ideas, just go to harrisrealestatedaily.com. That is our daily newsletter. harrisrealestatedaily.com is our daily newsletter where all of our notes are and also uh, that day's podcast and some exclusive content. So if you're not yet a subscriber, it doesn't cost you anything and it takes two seconds. Just go to harrisrealestatedaily.com, drop in your email address, and then this is the important part. You've got to go over to your email. You've got to look for the email from Harris Real Estate Daily confirming that you want the uh, subscription and then you're off to the races. Nothing more to do. And the first newsletter will arrive that day. So make sure you do that right away. All right, Julie, let's roll into part two. Part two starts with point number eight. Bring the mortgage magic. Have your favorite lender create rate sheets with different financing scenarios for the home. And you're going to see a lot more variety in these types of rate sheets as things get a little bit less regulated, I think, going forward after the election. Let me add to this, Julie. So we are going to be teaching these guys a lot in ethical real estate professional, exclusive mm -hmm. buyer agent, other things other than just basically lender rate sheets. Yep. And I'm going to give you guys some advanced player uh, information here. So if you're going to, if you're holding a house open and the owner has a FHA, VA, uh, USAA, USAA uh, all these different, like there's 20% of all mortgages out there. It's like 22% are assumable mortgages. And what does that mean? Someone took the mortgage out, say, four or five years ago. It's a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. The interest rate was, say, like something ridiculous, like 3%. Well, guess what? The mortgage is assumable with release, meaning that the new buyer has to qualify for the mortgage. But this, And then the new buyer has to you know, essentially cash the seller out of the house, pay them their equity. And then with approval, they can basically take the mortgage over. Not basically. They can take the mortgage over at that really ridiculously low rate and for the remaining term of that, um, the existing mortgage. They're not starting a new mortgage. They're not taking today's higher rates. They're rolling into a ridiculously low rate in the existing term on that mortgage, not starting a new one. If you have a seller when you're holding a house open like that, you're going to have magic in a bottle for any yes. prospective buyers. But that is also an amazingly powerful listing idea because you think anybody else other than list people listening to this podcast know what I just said? Nope. nope. Okay, so you're going to roll into a seller's house. You're going to be asking, you know, maybe it's an expired listing, something else like that. And you're going to be having a conversation with them uh, about what their mortgage is. You're going to, you know, they probably don't know if it's assumable. You're going to find out for them and you're going to let them know. And don't, you know, show all your cards. Make sure you've got the listing secured first. But you're going to explain to them how you're going to give them a massive unfair advantage in the marketplace because their mortgage is assumable. And trust me when I tell you, they won't know what the hell that means and neither will your prospective uh, competitors. So, you know, Again, we're all about giving you guys the unfair advantage in the marketplace, and that's just a snippet of one of the ideas. Yeah, that is a killer USP. I mean, compare that to there's three houses for sale in the neighborhood, and your house isn't like the other ones. The other ones you would have to do, you know, your typical 15, 20% down, say it's a 7% rate and a 30-year fixed, right? No, they go to your open house, and next to your beautiful home brochure is an explainer on how to assume, how to potentially assume the mortgage on this house, which is at 3% with only 25 years. All right, I mean, number, that's killer. Number nine, mind your P's and your Q's. What remember, do we mean by that? Well, be Julie, aware. Hold on. Do you remember what P's and Q's stands for? Remind me. I don't, I mean, remember, I don't remember either. <laughs> you know what? I know, but that's something from like the 19th. We all know what it means, but what do P's and Q's mean? I know. That's something that our grandmas, our great grandmas mm. used to say. Mind your P's and Q's. I'm going to have to look Peaches that up. Peaches and carrots? No, that's carrots is a C. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> okay. But what do we mean? Be aware of what you're authorized to say. 
whether it's by your seller, your listing, or your, especially if you're borrowing a listing for an open house, if someone asks you, why are the sellers moving? Don't overshare. Focus on the positive aspects of the property and avoid spilling details that could impact the seller's position, especially divorce case scenarios. Even, you know, people would construe if it's relocation, oh, they must be desperate because they have to reload. Don't, you know, don't, uh, reveal any of that unless they tell you that you can. Do yourself a favor though and do a little quick Google on the sellers prior to doing the open house because the buyers will as well. They'll find out who owns it. All that information is available. And if there is some reason that's been, you know, public information as to why maybe the seller is buying a house, maybe they just, you know, I'm sorry, maybe they just uh, bought a business, sold a business, they just had some big liquidity event, they just won the lottery. <laughs> you guys get what I'm saying? They just discovered they're one of Elon Musk's 11 children, something like that, <laughs> you know? So, and, and he's invited him to live on this big compound that he's building in Austin. <laughs> with, did you hear about that, by the I way? I read a headline about it, yeah. Yeah, okay. Anyway, yeah, he's building his own little commune, basically. <laughs> well, he needs one. <laughs> okay. He does. But, but yeah. the point of it is, is do some some homework on the sellers prior to you doing open house, especially obviously if this is your listing, because assume the buyers are going to be doing similar research and you don't want to be caught flat footed. That's right. Okay. Number 10, systematize your success. This is one of my favorite points. Imagine if, imagine when, not if, every open house brought in at least one listing and a steady stream of buyers. Make that dream a reality with a systematized open house, like we're laying out, you know, 30,000 feet here on the podcast, but certainly in coaching. Systematize your open house plan that always works. All, I mean, tons of our coaching clients report back every time I do an open house like you have prescribed, I get at least one new listing and a bunch of buyers. Why would you pay for buyer leads when you can generate them yourself? So let's say that Maybe you're not going to do open houses all four weekends every month. Okay. That's probably too much, especially you got other things going on, holidays, well, kids, whatever. Yeah, okay. Thanksgiving, Christmas. Fine. Let's say you do them two times a month and each time you get one or two great seller leads and one or two great buyer leads so that through systematizing every month you get two closable deals just from doing open houses correctly. And certainly we have tons of coaching clients that are doing well better than that. But also what you're really truly doing is you guys are all focused on, I'm going to build my brand. And so what do you think you're supposed to do? Videos, spend money, do ads, all this stuff. I'm building my brand. If you want to build your brand, do open houses, follow our system, get to know the neighbors. Then your brand will be somebody who's not lazy. Then your brand will be somebody who's actually trying to get homes sold for the most amount of money in the least amount of time in a particular neighborhood. Then your brand will become somebody that they like, they know, and they trust and who they're going to use as their agent. Isn't that ultimately what all this branding Mickey Mouse is supposed to be about? You can actually shortcut and frankly save a ton of money and frustration by going out and doing the real work of real estate. The agents making all the money right now are all shaking their heads yes. in approval because they know what I'm saying is true. And some of you are unfortunately going to continue to beat your heads against the wall, hoping that you know your branding campaign is all of a sudden going to make the clouds part and the money is just going to start pouring from the sky. You're going to have to do the real work of real estate. And this is true. This type of approach to life, doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level for longer periods of time than you think you might have to, that is ultimately always going to be the ultimate decoder ring for everything you want in life. That's right. And, and you know, the thing about systematizing your open house spoke, let's say that you create two deals a month out of that and the average commission in your area is maybe 15 grand. Are you telling me that you won't do what we're telling you to do here and what we coach you to do in Premier Coaching for 30 grand a month minimum? It's basically a part-time, not even a part-time job. And I get it. Some of you don't have listings right now. That's fine. You can maybe find a house that's vacant, that's not your listing, maybe not even your brokerage's listing. Or new construction. On, or new construction. You can find a house to hold open. Don't use that as your excuse because you don't have a listing. And I want to emphasize this. If you have a choice between holding a first-time home buyer type home open or a move-up home buyer or move-up home open, always choose the move up. Now you will get 10 X the activity on the first time home buyer house, but the home buyers for the most part of the leads that you get from that are going to be generally a lot less quality in terms of their ability to actually transact. Whereas if you're holding something that say, for example, the seller of the move up house would want to move to, then you're getting what you're going to, you know, obviously get the listing of the house that they have to sell. That was previously their first house. And then you're going to maybe sell them something on the up leg. Oh, and by the way, the house that you're holding open, and that is that move up house. Those folks also want to buy something multiple transactions for the same amount of work makes more sense to me. Absolutely. hundred percent. One of my favorite things to coach. All right. Number 11, become the encyclopedia of the property. Be more than three beds, two baths, right? Know the nitty gritty, the appliance ages, the roof status, local school ratings, HOA fees, and what they get for the HOA, property taxes, etc. 
If you don't know, don't guess. Take the time to figure it out. Buyers will appreciate your honesty and your expertise. Now, so so he, do the he, homework, especially if it's not your listing. But here's the spin on that. Let's say you have a successful open house and there's a lot of people asking for the nitty gritty. Now they can get all this information nowadays by searching it out themselves. Let them know that you have, and make sure you've done this, compiled a report on the particular house, answering all the questions about the ages of everything, and you'll be happy to email it to them. And use our idea from yesterday of either a sign-in book or essentially like an elaborate tip jar, you know, to get them to leave their information and then denote it on their sign-in um, on the registration book or on the stash of paper they put in the jar that they want that extra information and then... <coughs> Bless you. Excuse me. Make sure you email it to them as soon as the open house is over. And then after you've emailed it to them, make sure you make a follow-up phone call. Oh, by the way, we should have said this yesterday. Mm -hmm. If you're not calling, not dripping, if you're not calling every single person that registered for your open house after the open house, not two days later, but literally the same day, thanking them to come uh, for coming to your open house and then using our script that we have on Premier Coaching. If you're not doing that, you're wasting your time. They're not going to call you. They're not going to follow up with you. You have to follow up with them. Now, if these folks are actually, you know, uh, sellers, there are neighbors that were actually looking at your open house to see if they, what their might be, home might be worth, and you don't follow up, I guarantee you, you're not going to get their listing. But if you do follow up, you'll just, you'll figure out quickly, especially when you use our scripts and our system, that they're actually a neighbor doing their own comps because they're going to put their house for sale in the air quoting spring here, whatever that means to them. You guys have to be proactive like this. This is just an overview of all the things, well, one of the things that the open house system we teach you in Premier Coaching. Make sure you go to premiercoaching.com or text the word Premier to 47372. Remember, the first month of Premier Coaching is free. So simply go to premiercoaching.com or text the word Premier to 47372. And yes, that does include a daily semi-private coaching call with a Harris certified coach. All right, point number 12, bring a buddy, ideally a licensed partner, another agent that you're friendly with. A lot of people, their spouses, like I was just talking yesterday about Kristen and Greg Holly in uh, coaching clients in Fort Worth, but bring a licensed partner to manage sign-ins, answer questions, and keep things secure. It's great to have high traffic. Some of your open houses are really getting slammed right now, but knowing that every visitor will be remembered and followed up with is part of your system. The main thing is have somebody greeting, if ideally you, everyone when they come in the front door. Everyone who comes in the front door needs to be greeted. You cannot just be sitting back there watching football in the back of the house or screwing around on your computer or having, you know, shout out when you hear the door open and close. Come walk on in. You know and what that's called? It's called lazy agent. It's called sitting the open house. Exactly. Because you're just sitting you, there. Imagine if you had a high-end retail store or even any retail store. You walk in and someone's almost always there to greet you and ask, uh, you know, basically ask you to register and ask, you know, if you need any help, whatever, whatever. You know, just think about walking into a, a store, any kind of store. There's almost always somebody there that's friendly that's going to greet you. The high-end or rather the – like walk into a Victoria's Secret. And the only reason we know this is because – uh, not because we frequent Victoria's Secret. Every day. No. <laughs> no, because one of our customers, actually, when we sold real estate, was a gal that worked for Victoria's Secret, uh, uh, Marguerite. Marguerite, yeah. yep. Uh, Garvey, yeah. Mm -hmm. And she would um, help open the stores around the world. And so she told us about the whole system. And here's how it worked. Is when you walk into a um, Victoria's Secret, there would be a greeter. And the greeter knew that they were going to hear the word no all the time. And they were essentially salespeople, and they were supposed to be toughening up their sales skills by getting rejected constantly. Can I help you? Are you looking for anything special? Nope, no, just no. looking. No, 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 no. Okay. So as you meander back further into the store, and if you ever noticed all those um, usually gals in the Victoria's Secret all have headsets on, they're all talking with each other. Mm -hmm. So as you meander back into the store further, you'd run into a more skilled salesperson. And then you, if you went, meandered back to the store even further, then you'd walk into their top tier salesperson. And that's the person that you'd walk in there and you just wanted to buy or, or, you know, buy a pair of underwear or whatever. And the next thing you walking out with $10,000 of the bras or I don't, I don't <laughs> yeah. know what you gals do, Something but you get the like idea. That. But the point of it is, yeah. is you got to think like a high end retailer and the experience that you have when you walk into a store, you're greeted, always have a greeter. If you don't have a greeter that, and again, that's a neighbor that's thinking about putting their house for sale, maybe subconsciously looking for a listing agent and you're back there watching football, I guarantee you're not getting that listing. Guys, conceptually, yeah. 
think about what I'm saying. It should be obvious to all of you. The greeter should welcome everyone, entice them to sign in in the registration book or put their name in the tip jar idea we gave you yesterday. And then you are going to be there that's going to be a little further back to answer any of the heavy lift questions. That should be intuitively obvious to all of you. That's right. If some of you have sat an open house and not gotten results, it's because you're not systematizing it. You're not doing everything on the checklist. You're not treating it like the lead generation machine that it is meant to be and that it, it will be when you systematize it. Now, by by the way, so you're clear, if once you gather all these folks' information and you do call them and you do use our script and you do pre-qualify them and you do pull out the ones that are actually viable leads, those others, you can put them into a CRM and you can drip on them, but that is not the end of the story. You have to keep calling them. Yes. A drip without a call is a waste of effort. You've wasted your time. You've wasted the potential of that transaction. Please remember we told you that. Yes, and that plays right into our final point about following up. Follow up like a pro. Make it your mission to connect, to reconnect with every single lead from every single open house until they are either working with you and signed your buyer agency agreement, right? Your exclusive buyer contract that we teach you. We'll talk about that again more in a second. They're either working with you, they've signed that they're working with you, they've told you that they're no longer interested in buying or selling, or they're going to wait. You have to have these conversations and sift and sort. To Tim's point, some of them, a certain percentage of them, and with regards to open houses, it's a pretty big percentage of them that are going to transact. Remember, a lot of people go to open houses because they want that neighborhood. They've already sifted and sorted themselves. They've basically pre-qualified themselves. Some of them are all cash. Some of them are already loan approved. Your job is to sort them out. Now, this is a good time for us to interject something all of you are going to be experiencing if you're not experiencing it already. The need to have exclusive buyer agency contracts is real. And it's going to cause, it already is causing a lot of confusion um, in the marketplace. And we noticed, and this is definitely happening, a lot of agents are basically in clear violation of the new guidelines and not even having exclusive signed. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, and I'm not going to talk about fees and all these other things. You're just not going to get paid because what's going to happen is that the, I don't, it's either going to be, if you're in a large brokerage, the large brokerage is going to flag it. If not, it might be the title escrow. But what's going to happen if there's not an exclusive contract signed? in the contract. And if there's not a provision for your buyer agent commission as a concession from the seller to the buyer in the contract, you're not going to get paid. And I realize that most of the industry is still operating as if there was no new guidelines in place because the enforcement mechanisms have yet to be in place. But those are all happening now. Julie and I know, and I'm going to tell you, this is absolutely what's going to happen. The largest brokerages, those that actually signed as part of the, um, uh, the, the settlement, uh, yeah, the settlement and actually had to write those big checks. They're the ones that are most worried about essentially uh, not being in, um, uh, basically not being in, you know, compliance. compliance with that particular guideline, those guidelines. And so they are going to uh, put mechanisms in place. And I'm talking about all the biggest brokerages. And if you turn in a file, you worked with a buyer, you've done everything right, you thought you did everything right, you go to the closing, and let's say the uh, listing agent get, pays you half the commission. You turn in the file, there is no exclusive signed. There is no carve out in the contract from a concession from the seller to the buyer to pay your commission. Your broker will not pay you because they do not want to be out of compliance. That is what the spring is going to be like. That is what a lot of you are going to wake up. Some of you are living in fear of, you know, frankly, not knowing how to get exclusive contracts signed. And you should be because for the first time ever, it's mandatory that agents have agreements signed with their buyers where the buyers are, you know, essentially acknowledging and agreeing that they're the ones that are liable for the buyer agent's commissions. In other words, the buyer agent has to justify why they're worth the money that they're charging that particular buyer. And that's this is where the rubber is going to meet the road. There's going to be a huge bifurcation in the industry of agents agents that know how to get the sign, contract signed and agents that don't. And yeah, I know you can probably use some kind of crusty scripts and get first-time homebuyers to sign it, but anybody with any level of sophistication is going to ask a lot of questions. And, and what's happening is we're seeing that the buyer agents that uh, know how to get the contract signed are far and few, and the, and the more, exclu the more I think, what we call high-caliber uh, quality buyers, they're going directly to the listing agents. Yes. They're bypassing the old system. They're not calling their uncle Barney anymore, who they bought three houses with, because they don't even want to have the conversation with Barney about getting the contract signed. They're going right to listing agents. And until the industry wakes up to everything we just said, which is going to happen in the spring, you're going to not going to you're going to see a whole bunch of agents doing a whole bunch of work not getting paid anything. Please remember what I told you. This is what's going to happen. It's already happening. No one's talking about it. But I know for a fact it's happening. 
So that's the reason, one of the main reasons why Julie and I have created Ethical Real Estate Professional Exclusive Buyer Agency. Uh, and it's a new designation. The program is going to be coming out. I know I've been promising this last, <laughs> last you know, month and a half. Um, our team is frankly taking too long. It's getting frustrating. But the reality of it is, is this is going to be something that's going to save your bacon when it comes to get exclusive sign. And I'm going to paint a picture for you because this is what your life is going to be like as an ethical real estate professional agent. And you can go to the website and see uh, what ethical real estate professional is all about. There's only going to be 2,500 of these agents ever. We're only going to allow 2,500 agents uh, to have membership to this new exclusive program. It's basically the ultimate good housekeeping seal of approval. Go look at the seal on the website and you'll see it's indeed gold and it looks really nice. So you're going to walk into appointments and you're going to be you know, talking to buyers, talking to prospective buyers, and you're going to explain to them that you're an ethical real estate professional. And this is above and beyond anything that's been existing in the industry prior. But not only that. We've created a absolutely kick-ass home run presentation that you're going to send to that buyer prior to meeting with them that's going to answer all the questions, including the commission questions, about why they want to work exclusively with you. Because here's what Julie and I know for a fact. Many of you will not take the time to actually learn how to present to a buyer about why you know, you're USPs. You're going to wing it. And that's what most of you are going to do. We don't want you to wing it because then you're going to lose when it comes to getting paid. So we created a presentation for you that will do the work for you. It acts as your own silent salesperson that you're going to send to that buyer ahead of the appointment. And the buyer is going to read the pages in the presentation. And then that when you actually meet with them, it's going to be a function of just getting the form signed because they're already going to have been decided that they want to work exclusively with you. Because of all the added USPs, unique selling propositions that you're going to be offering to the buyer that your competition isn't. And remember, you're going to be an ethical real estate professional agent. And I wonder why your competitors aren't. We've made this exclusive. We're only going to allow 2,500 agents to join ever. And I want you to get your name on the uh, interest list so you can be invited to the launch event. Text the word BUYER B-U-Y-E-R to 47372. Text the word BUYER B-U-Y-E-R to 47372. Outside of our book, that continues to be a bestseller, this is going to be the most powerful thing that Julie and I have ever done for the real estate industry because it's going to raise the bar, not just for the agents that join Ethical Real Estate Professional, but all the other agents that have to compete with those Ethical Real Estate Professional agents. You must get your name on the list and you must consider becoming an Ethical Real Estate Professional agent because that will give you the ultimate differentiator in your marketplace. Everyone has marketing and branding. Everyone has videos. Everyone has a great you know, website. But how many people are going to be Ethical Real Estate Professionals total? 20 2,500 out of 1.6 million agents, and it's going to be a very elite specialized group. So do get on the list. Text the word buyer to 47372. Yeah, and I have to say, I'm super proud of the work that we've gotten done on that. It's very competitive. It's very powerful, and it will solve the problem you, of getting the signature. You said a word. You tell me. It, there, how are you going to keep – if you're in a listing appointment, let's say, or you're in an appointment to get a really high-end buyer, a reload buyer that's spending $5 million, you know, and they are now considering you or three other agents. And let's say for the most part, you and the three other agents, you know, you're all successful. You're all nice. You all have a golden retriever. You're you all experienced. Have, you all have experience. You all have fancy websites, all the things, right? But you're the only one that's an ethical real estate professional agent. You're the only one that has this key differentiator and all the other agents are basically going to get set, set aside because the question is going to become, I wonder why they're not ethical real estate professionals. I wonder why they haven't taken the, the pledge to be ethical real estate professionals. Let's see if they're actually listed on the ethical real estate professional website. Oh, look at that. They're not. Oh, it turns out I'm the only one in the marketplace that is. You guys get the difference? If you're wanting to know how to differentiate yourself, differentiate yourself in the marketplace, aside from the obvious influence you create from actually being successful, this is it. This is going to be the crown jewel in many of your marketing campaigns for the rest of your careers. And this designation is backed by many tools. We're not just doing this so that you can have a fancy sticker, okay? You're an ethical real estate professional because you've taken the ethical real estate professional pledge, and there are very specific things you have to be committed to. Because you have unique selling propositions, you have unique guarantees, you have obvious value. Remember the talking point, articulate your value. Some of you have struggled with that. It's not your fault. You haven't really had to do it until now, but you can't hide out from it. The issue that's happening right now, and some of you will, will you know, 
say, yeah, I, I did that. I, I wonder what happened to that buyer. The issue that's happening now is you're trying to make the law your USP. You have to sign this because she's it's a about, requirement. She's now. talking about the guideline to have the, the exclusive guideline. sign. You guys are not transitioning at all. You're saying sign this. Because you have to. The buyers, especially more experienced buyers are looking at it. They're reading it. They're seeing that you're trying to get them to obligate themselves to X amount of commission. And they're saying, I've never had to do this before. You don't know how to explain it. You don't know how to articulate your value. Why would they want to sign exclusively with you? And you're scaring those buyers off. They're we're, ghosting you in some cases. And worse now is that they're all those buyers are congealing on uh, Reddit and they're talking on different websites mm -hmm. and they're comparing notes about their experiences. I, my buyer, my agent asked me to sign this damn form and I'm not paying them 3%. And then somebody else in you know different states saying the same thing. There is more, uh, there's such massive storm clouds that are forming right now. And nobody in our industry, everyone in our industry basically is saying, oh, there's these commission reports that came out that said buyer agent commissions um, haven't yet, didn't drop precipitously. They didn't, but that doesn't mean that they won't. And they haven't because there's no real enforcement in place to enforce it. I just told you what's going to happen. If anybody wants to debate what our vision of the future is with regards to how these things are going to be enforced, let's do it. Please. Because we've been looking for reasons to believe that we are wrong. It's a lot of work on our end of things. But right? honestly, I hope we are yeah. wrong. But yeah. I know we're not. No, I don't because think Because if, if I was EXP Realty and I just wrote a check for $35 million, $35 million yeah. and I'm now being held to guidelines and I know the plaintiff's attorneys anytime can have a little look-see into my closed transactions and they're looking for closed buyer sites that got paid out and they're now seeing that the paperwork wasn't done properly and you're, not in, uh, you're in violation of the guidelines, you're going to open yourself up, Mr. EXP Royalty Broker, for further litigation. And they're not going to do that. And that's not made up. They have publicly said that they plan on doing that. There's been a lot of headlines saying they're watching you. They're waiting for their quarterly opportunity to go audit things. Well, yeah, she means the plaintiff's attorneys yeah. again. So she's talking about plaintiff's attorneys who's waiting for their opportunity to. But that's what's going to happen. And then what's going to happen is you, everything we just said is you know, people are going to stop getting, you know, agents are not going to, they're going to go to closings looking for their checks. There's going to be no checks checks for them. They're going to get pissed off. The brokers are going to pay out anyway. In some cases, they're going to get caught. It's going to be a big mess. It's a big mess by design. I mean, the plaintiff's attorneys have created this insurmountable spider web that you can't, you know, frankly, you have to follow the rules. You have to follow the guidelines. And so we created the Ethical Real Estate Professional Exclusive Buyer Agency Program, the designation, so that you you guys would be in compliance so you don't have to learn the hard way by losing out on deals. So text the word BUYER to 47372. Text the word BUYER to 47372. In the meantime, have a fantastic weekend. Do your open houses, and we'll talk with you on Monday.